Good morning, good morning, and welcome to another episode of Tadatula's Sofa Safaris. Uh, I'm Chad, I will be taking you through the next half hour of uh, virtual safaris, and um, it's half past five and the sun hasn't risen yet. I'm realizing that uh, this year's flying by and we're already approaching what comes after summer, autumn, that's the one. Um, a nice chill in the air not something we usually get to experience in uh, february but i must be honest february has passed us by with with thermometer and mercury really being pushed above maybe 32 33 it's been a incredibly mild and incredibly pleasant february um so yeah fantastic uh anyway enough about the weather um lion cubs are <laughs> still on my radar i want to show these things to you so um, I'm heading back towards the area of Jackal's Clay, even though I'm not actually convinced that the den site is there at the moment. Uh, we haven't seen activity of the females there for a few days. It's our best starting point. So uh, we'll try for that. Otherwise, um, take it as it comes. So uh, come along for the ride. So I literally just put my phone down and what is in the road in front of me? We are nowhere near Jackal's Clay. We're just out of our camp. It is the entire pride with the cub. Wow, if I'd just started filming at five seconds later, you would have captured my incredible shock on camera because, yeah, we're oh, 500 meters from camp. It was the last thing I was expecting to find was a lion here, but let alone the entire well, not the entire, the majority of the pride looks like three, two lionesses, two males, the sub-adult, and hiding somewhere behind those males is the cub. So we will uh, wait for it to come out. And here's our sub-adult. So one mom's got up and moved somewhere. Didn't see, her. <clears throat> Didn't see where she went. That's the bush for you. Nice surprises, but also very interesting to see that they have moved um, this side. It's the second time in a row we've not seen all the females together, and the one that seems to be missing, by my calculation, is the other female that lost her cubs last year, that we suspect is pregnant. So I wonder if she's maybe gone to give birth somewhere, but pure speculation for now. I haven't seen any physical sign to indicate this. And if I'm honest, I actually haven't even been able to com um, confidently identify the females I have been seeing with them in the couple of occasions I have seen the pride. And there we go. Sofa Safari debutante. I actually see three lionesses now. A couple hiding in this thicket on my left. Our little unsexed cub at the moment. Um, I'm not even going to have a guess. I guess I have 50% chance of being right, so I'm going to say female. But um, oh, how cute is that? Now, we're not 100% sure exactly when it was born. We knew that she, the mom, which is not actually the one that she's sitting with there, the one that she's sitting with is the mom of the this year old. From the first week of January around New Year, she was showing signs and behavior of having had the cup. So we suspect it was probably either born last week of December or around the beginning of the year, 1st of Jan. And as a result, that makes this little one about seven weeks old now. Super, super cute. Interesting to see at such a young age moving around with the pride. Doesn't, to be honest, it looks a bit older than seven weeks. Probably close to eight, nine weeks, but... Um, hey. I mean, how cute is that? You see how small its head is in comparison to the auntie behind. Your he's looking terrible. This male, this is one of the no males, he is. Oh, I'm going to be one of those people 
saying in desperate need of a meal. Not desperate, but he really could do with a meal. He is very, very, very skinny. Now, female's looking good. Well, that's the mum. Um, the limping male's looking good. I just, I have, this is the one male I haven't seen for a while, so I don't know where he's been, but yeah, he's not in great condition. So, so just a bit surprising, considering we've got a good number of wildebeest and zebras around. Um, decent impala. Uh, it is just a bit of a surprise that um, he would be struggling. Maybe he's been off mating with the old girl. Um, who knows? I don't actually see the old girl at the moment, though. So, anyway, they're all lying in long grass. And just off the road, but it makes it very difficult to see them. Um, but with a bit of um, bit of luck, they will show themselves nicely, and we'll get to identify exactly who is here and who is missing. It's pretty crazy just how long this grass is and what it can hide. And this isn't even in a long grassy area. This is what I've considered normal grass at the moment. As always, mum's tails become great at chew things. It requires a lot of patience from mum because that is a, probably an unpleasant experience having those little teeth bite into it every few seconds. So while we are sitting with them, you can hear the limping narrow male and 
missing female roaring a little bit down the road may suggest that they're off mating together. And Sorry, I thought I heard impalas alarm calling at them. And it may also explain if this other male's been MIA. He may also have been mating for a few days and not eating and could account for his uh, poor condition. The things men do for love. But um, yeah, we'll have to just wait and see if they come waltzing up here. Uh, that's why this one roared earlier. It was just a response to the female. Interestingly, not the male. Uh, the second time they roared, the male joined in. But um, he's happy to let the females know where he is, but not where he's a coalition partner, which I find odd. These poor lines of fly lines, all animals that have these flies on them constantly. You know the pain because they're landing on me, biting me every now and then, and it's an absolute pain in the backside. Decided to move a little bit away, not that it's actually going to help. They will find him. And they will bite him. So that was a fantastic, fantastic surprise. Um, yeah, as I say, if I could only have started recording my introduction clip like five seconds later, because I'd honestly no sooner pushed stop and uh, looked up and there was the lioness on the road. Just how you want all your mornings to start. Um, well, they've all gone to sleep under a very thick bush. There's, there's no visuals, so we're gonna carry on. Try see if we can find the um, other two limping male and the old girl uh, see if they may be mating and then um, carry on and then we'll come back to these ones this afternoon I'm sure once it cools down later they'll come out and hopefully be out in the open um, it was sorry particularly frustrating with my cameras this morning um, <laughs> they were struggling like crazy in that grass so I hope the footage is fine but uh, let's carry on with the drive mm, I'd hear some of their partners calling in the background this is our gorgeous woodland kingfisher, which I don't think I've really recorded too much. I never make it easy, they always fly away. Just like that. Oh, he's back. Oh, got insect there. It's such beautiful colours. They are honestly one of the highlights of summer for many guides in the area. That, that electric blue, the, the black and red beak, the black on the wings there white chest oh they are just picture perfect and gone so i haven't found any sign of those two lines um but there are some nice tracks and signs with tumbela coming through here i just want to go show you something mm, lovely to me this looks like where she has exuded some um material from her gut I wouldn't say this is feces. You can see there's a lot of grass in there, some of the hairs, and just like when your cats cough up fur balls and that, you'll often see leopards eating grass, lions too, and just helps them to purge the stomach. And to me, that looks like uh, where she has thrown up some of this. Um, so yes, delightful scene, but uh, the fact that it is still pretty moist tells me that it's not particularly old. Uh, maybe in the last couple of hours, so we'll have a little scratch around. Maybe she's not too far away. So I spotted a herd of eddies at a distance and thought, let me just come in and check to see if there were any little ones. And sure enough, there we have a teeny tot with his mom. Bums disappearing into a not often filmed woodland with us here on Surf Safaris, but that's a little Napani woodland out here in our uh, northeastern corner. 
Um, again, I've probably mentioned it before, but we don't have a lot of this Mapani tree, even though it is the most abundant tree in the Kruger National Park. But um, the elephant herds know where the thickets are here. You can hear one being destroyed to my right. But they will, in their feeding efforts and journeys, they will target these Mapani woodlands and uh, walk some distance to find them. Unfortunately, these Ellies are just heading into thicker and a thicker bush that is not going to make our lives easier, and I'm not going to go crashing through there unnecessarily. So, um, we'll leave them be and uh, carry on searching for Tumbela for a little bit longer. Um, slightly interesting weather this morning. You can see how low these clouds are sitting. It's creating a misty effect appearance that side whereas where I am now it's clear blue and no no cloud cover very beautiful scene though so we have a common plant that we see in summer well, I tends to actually keep these throughout the year it's not a grass it's a I guess a flower of sorts called silky burweed also heard it being called hare's tail before um, but I don't know how I'm going to demonstrate this maybe like this but a uh, very sharp ow 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 it's full of these sharp little uh, seeds and um, if I, ow smack myself with it and wait a little bit You'll see how cedars got stuck to the skin. And you'll also see there, in a little spot of blood in the middle, how it's actually sharp enough to uh, cut your skin. And it makes it pretty damn sore on your arm. Um, t temporary pain, fortunately. But uh, I remember being the guinea pig when I studied for uh, trying plants that hurt you out. So uh, my arms got hit and rubbed with many, many a thing. But uh, this is one I do remember, the silky burrweed. <laughs> You can also see how red my hand has or arm has become from hitting myself there. But only one drop of blood, so not too bad. Just arrived at Mishatan Dam and looking for uh, some birds actually, some uh, lesser moorhens that are around here. Not a common bird, but uh, considering the rain and the inundated grasses around these dams, they have become far more um, in evidence. To those looking for them, I've not seen any yet, but there's there's one seen here yesterday with a bunch of chicks, so we're hoping that she shows herself uh, from the long grass he reads. Um, but Mr. Hippo has come to say hi. Let's see if it's on a display. Yep, that is an insect buzzing around my head. Lemon big one. What are you? It's like a you used to call a bumblebee as a child. But it's not a bee. It's like quite a nice scene there with the grey heron perched upon our log. He doesn't like that I'm giving attention to the grey heron and not him. If you um want to find out a little bit more about hippos be sure to check out our little bush bites clip that i did last monday on world hippo day uh, to find out a little bit more about uh, about this guy there goes your gray heron in the background i did allude to the fact that we seldom see too much of a hippo see those eyes the ears and the nose but uh, as he's uh, half Emerging from the water, you can see a much larger body being uh, concealed mostly by that water, but now uh, out for us to see. Another one of our water birds over there, a water thickney. Might hear the 
the rasping call of a of our grey heron coming from behind the hippo. <laughs> Very pterodactyl like. Well, what I imagine a pterodactyl would sound like, considering I wasn't actually around when they were still alive. But then I guess none of you were either, so maybe it is exactly what a pterodactyl sounds like. <laughs> And that's what a hippo sounds like. I can't make any dinosaur comparisons to that. So I don't uh, imagine that's how dinosaurs sounded. Yes, these are the things I think about when I drive around on my own. What did dinosaurs sound like? But uh, that call was for him just to advertise his territory, his presence. Um, not that he's got anybody to worry about, unfortunately, for his sake. All right, but these moorhens are not showing, so I think I'm going to carry on and um, see see what else the morning brings, otherwise uh, we'll be back out the Savi to look for uh, those lines again. Come across a temperamental elephant bull, a young, young bull, late teens. And of course, as I'm filming this, my um, front camera stopped working. <laughs> Love Ellie's of this age. So cheeky. So he's exhibiting typical behavior that you would expect an elephant to do when it's trying to make itself more intimidating. The ears out, the head up. But yeah, he's uh, too young and not confident enough to carry through and there are so many baby baby mongooses on the road. Oh, they're gonna stay, these are Tiny baby dwarf mongooses. Look at the size of these things. It's difficult to get a scale in a shot like this, but uh, they are so cute. I mean, dwarf mongooses are tiny at the best of times, but when you've got the little babies out here, sweet man. We need an adult to pop out for comparison. Size comparison. There is a tiny baby impala amongst there, but they all ran away as I started filming, so that's not going to help this uh, little segment. And just maybe said it's ears sticking over the one adult in the back, but um, a fraction of the size of these slightly older lambs. Um, as for the baby that I'm trying to show you. Oh, there it is. Now in the middle. Look at how much tinier that is than the others. couple of buffalo bulls resting out in the open here near one of our water holes in the South Marcos Dam. Temperamental old men in a sea of green. There was a southern ground hornbill in front, but he's now wandered away before I could get my camera out. I'm not having a good filming day, I'm not going to lie. Okay, here it is. It'd be a rarity to see one on its own. I'm not sure where the rest of the flock are. <laughs> Two animals that are probably in the same boat in terms of a uh, feeling heat today. It's just after nine o'clock and um, already that sun has got a bit of a bite to it. Let's see another one moving into frame now, or oh, not moving into frame, moving into my frame of view. Field view, that's what it's called. And all the way across, and uh, there it comes into your frame. Words and cameras are failing me today. What's going on? There's actually a number of buffalo here. Um, there's one who's emerged from the water, 
mud wallow behind us there and um, three more that are actually in the water already so yeah as I was saying ground hornbills buffaloes with their dark feathers and hair are going to be feeling the sun today so buffaloes have the advantage of being able to come and sit in the water like this to cool down unfortunately those birds don't but that's where those big red pouches on their the gula pouches are believed to help uh, with thermoregulation, keeping them cool. A beautiful, beautiful big elephant bull coming waltzing down the road, and I don't even need to see his penis to see if it's dribbling. I can tell you he's in must, just from his swagger. Nice to see a big tusked boy again. Stands with some giraffe watching on. He's not making it easy to film or photograph him. He's always on the move. And because I don't actually know him very well, or his temperament, I'm a bit hesitant to let him get too close when he's uh, in full must like he is. But he seems very chilled. You know, these big guys are often some of the gentlest of the giants. Right, so I'm uh, heading out. I'm about uh, 42 seconds away from our lions, which is great when they're sleeping outside your camp. Um, it is still a bit bright, maybe a little bit warm today. Uh, so I'm not expecting them to be jumping around just yet, but uh, as that sun sets, I'm sure they are going to get active. Uh, so yeah, let's I'll go see what we can find. All right, we're back at the bush that housed the lions all day. A uh, weeping wattle. You can hear them inside, but you can actually, I don't know if you can see how they've flattened the grass today as they've been moving around trying to keep the shade. And hear the cub inside and the sub adult calling. You get a better idea of the flattened grass now. Oh, there we go. Uh, Luke, if you're looking from, from the Kansas City Park, you can see it might be worth doing. <laughs> Playtime has officially begun. So although the sub-adult is um, quite a lot older than the cub, the boys have all just sat up now, and the female behind them there. Um, yeah, sorry, although that sub-adult is older than the cub by close to a year, it's all going to be the most tolerant and playful of the big lions. You can see that male a little better now. He's the one who's not in great condition. Actually looking at the previous episode of Sof Safari, when we had these two males together in the rain, even then he wasn't uh, looking fantastic. So, yeah, I'm not quite sure what ails him. Hopefully it's nothing too serious, because it would severely damage the power of this coalition if... Um, one of the two healthy males were to fall to the wayside and a loss of strength in the males would mean a loss of strength for the protection of this pride and that can be potentially devastating for the pride and for the stability of, of the lions in this area so we do hope that he gets the meal he needs Much easier to see now that the lions have flattened the grass. It's not just grass of ears, it's actually a lion cub. And a curious one at that. Feels like an age ago since we were blessed with those cubs during our 
initial lockdown. Six of them. And uh, what a treat that was. It's um, wonderful to have a cub, but if I'm completely honest, it is a little sad that it is only one cub. Um, I mean, so much of the joy that these cubs bring us is from their interaction and play with one another. And this lone cub now um, hasn't got that same um, level of energy because it hasn't got the playmates. So it becomes a far more, dare I say, lion-like in its behavior, resting more, playing less uh, than it would if it had playmates. We hope that the other female has cubs soon. So we'll have to have a look to see what's um, what's happening with her. Um, they're still in such long grass, it's almost impossible. But um, hey, I'm just being greedy now. I'm thinking back to what we had. Just be happy that we have one cub and uh, it will get all the mom's attention. And it will hopefully grow to add to this pride. Now that it's moving around, I must actually try sex it too. So this is the female that we were suspecting was pregnant. And she's just gone back into the grass, which isn't going to help. Did come and died uh, on our side. So it's a little bit of a that we think we lost. Yeah. I think we get hold of a colleague who said he should have smoked for him. Yeah. And just leave it here for another day. It didn't seem like it's been a uh, stop. Maybe heading south. I don't know what it is. Um, we hadn't seen any tracks until this one came out. Very, very cool to see the playfulness of that cub as the days cool down beautifully. Um, a bit of radio chat you may have heard. The wild dogs have come into the area, which is great. A pack of 12 coming in at their usual place up in our northern boundary. But um, more exciting was, and I don't know if I got this on film, but when the suspect, or the other female, not the mom of the little cub, not the mom of the older cub, walked past, 
she had very very clear suckle marks so she has had cubs somewhere so we have got another litter in the river pride hiding somewhere we have no idea where their behavior is not giving us any clues potentially not even within our concession they may be further east of us but um, i'm sure it won't be long until she brings them towards the Mashatan river bed where um, this little one has been spending most of its time until now but uh, really exciting that we can kick off 2021 with a couple of litters of lion cubs so fingers crossed that uh, we get to see those ones very soon We are uh, very close to having a full moon, a couple of days away. And if you're really intrigued, you can then go see when the full moon is and when I actually recorded this episode. 24th of February, in case you care. But, uh, beautiful sight. These lines crossed into a very thick block, just east of our camp, not far from where they'd been resting. Just going to wait to see if they maybe pop out here by the camp or by the dam. If not, I'm going to say goodbye, but uh, don't go just yet. <laughs> I sowed 17 gazillion. It's getting dark. I uh, actually didn't have any luck with those lions coming out and then heard that the wild dogs have made it almost all the way towards Tundatula property and around Sunset Plains, and I thought, let me go have a quick look, see if I can catch them before it gets too dark, but it is not to be. Um... So yeah, possibly something for our next surf safari, so be sure to catch up again next week. But for now anyway, I hope that you have enjoyed uh, our first introduction to the latest member of the River Pride. And I'm sure it won't be too long before we can show you a few more little faces. But uh, it was really wonderful to have uh, what has been, well only my second, but definitely the best sighting of that cub so far. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, until next time everyone, stay safe, take care. And cheerio.